What's going on everyone? It's Simon and today I'm taking you guys through two real world tests of the 2015 versus the 2019 MacBook Pro. A lot of people have been talking about switching to PCs and like powerhouse computing and that kind of stuff. I really like the Mac ecosystem, so I've decided to stay in the Apple ecosystem. And with that, I wanted to do some side-by-side -side testing, real-world situations that I run into on a daily basis. And these are two pretty much four-year different comparable computers. When I bought this computer in 2015, it was specced out as much as you could, and it cost like $3,800. My new one that I just got is pretty much the same exact thing, but with all of the 2019 bells and whistles. That being said, I did not get the highest processor because I didn't see enough of a difference between 2.3 gigahertz processor and a 2.4 gigahertz processor to justify a $200 price increase. Everything else though is maxed out as much as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to run two real world tests. One is with a large Lightroom export, and the other is with a Final Cut export as well. Now, to keep things fair, I'm going to use a G Technology mobile SSD, and this is where I'm going to be running the projects off of that all of the source data will be connected via Wi-Fi on my NAS. I have a Synology uh, DS1817+, Plus, which is where all of my main files are stored, and so we're going to keep everything equal. I'm going to run the test on the old computer, and then I'm going to run the test on the new computer, and we're going to see how they perform side by side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export full resolution files, no anything reduction in file size, where I am going to be, it's a mix of DJI Mavic 2 Pro, A7 III, and A7R III raw images. So we're going to run the test first here, and I'm going to start a timer with it. Then I'm going to run the test on the new one, and we're going to see what the time difference is. I don't know exactly what this is going to be. I haven't run the test yet, so we're going to jump right into it, and I'm really curious what it's going to end up being. I've got everything set up. I've got my export. I've got 375 images, full resolution. Uh, I just have to make a fresh little folder for this to go into. The files are going to go onto the G drive, uh, just keeping things as consistent as possible. And one second, oh, wrong place. There we, there we go. Uh, all right, so we're going to make a new folder called 2015, create, and then three, two, one. All right, so there you have it. It took 27 minutes and 37 seconds for 375 full res images to export with the 2015 MacBook. Now give me one second and we're gonna switch this over to the Final Cut export, right? All right, so now I've got the Final Cut project loaded. Uh, this is a project that I finished earlier in the year for a client. The end result is about a three to three and a half minute video and we're just gonna see how long it takes to export the full 10. It's only 1080p, so we'll see how long it takes to export the 1080p file. Boom, all right. We'll see what happens. All right, so it took about 56 seconds, 57 seconds. Uh, my slight delay because of the button press was 57 and a half, so we'll call it 57 seconds. So now we're gonna switch to the 2019 MacBook Pro and see what the exports are on that one. One thing I do wanna note is that I'm leaving them plugged in so that way we know that there's no outer lying issues that could come up. And last but not least, 
switching my cable. All right, so already off the bat, you know that being USB-C versus USB-A is going to be a faster uh, trans uh, transfer, at least to the G technology drive. So let's get the, first of all, let's get the brightness up. There we go. All right, so now, all right, we've got the library open. We've got it back up to our 375 images. And now we're going to create. All right, so now, three, two, one. There you have it. 18 minutes, six seconds. Just a, just a wee bit faster than the other computer. So now we're gonna jump to the, all right, so I have the Final Cut project up ready to go. I just verified that the settings are the exact same as the other one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see how it goes now. All right, so that ended up again with a button press a minute and seven seconds. So the export was a little slower with this computer, but we'll analyze it all together right now. Now we've got the results in. It was very interesting. I actually didn't do any of these tests beforehand. Uh, I just wanted to see exactly how it would go with you guys for the very first time that I was running these tests. So I'm slightly surprised by the video export results, but it's also a fairly nominal difference. Uh, I may actually do this again with 4K video, um, but I'm gonna pop the results up right here for the Lightroom export. Now, very interesting just to show how much faster the new machine is than the old machine for exporting 375 high resolution JPEG images. Now, I don't normally export that many in a single stint, but it's good to know that it does perform that much faster. Uh, that being said, the video thing is a little, little surprising that this exported a little slower. Um, I'm curious, I might have to investigate this a little bit more. Um, but yeah, overall, I absolutely love the machine. Uh, one of the other things I absolutely love when it comes to working is actually the much larger trackpad is a much more efficient use now that I've gotten to use it a little bit. Um, it's made me so much more efficient editing while I'm on the road, uh, just because of the fact that I've got more space to move around with my hands on that trackpad. Um, other than that, that's all I got for you guys this time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.